I'm going to talk about binary image processing. Now binary images are just images containing 0 or 1 values only. Or you might think of them as true or false or on or off. So for example, this image contains uh, white pixels, say 1s and zeros for the background. Um, so we might get these images from a thresholding operation or as a result of doing some kind of feature detection. And we often want to count or measure the shapes of uh, 2D binary image regions. For example, we might want to count how many circles there are, measure their area, location, etc. Let's first look at thresholding as a way of getting binary images. <clears throat> so in thresholding, we can use a uh, single threshold for the whole image, a global threshold, or we can do some kind of local or adaptive thresholding. There's an example of an image, uh, 8.tiff, that has uh, a light colored background and dark regions where we have these coins. If I look at the histogram of this image, I see two major uh, peaks. The large one here um, corresponds to the background and the uh, smaller, darker one here corresponds to these coin regions. So I could threshold the image by choosing a value somewhere in between here. For example, like 160 or something. Um, I could threshold it by, in MATLAB, um, using this expression here, uh, i greater than t, where t is the threshold value. So that will give me true where those pixels are greater than t and zero or false otherwise. So uh, that would convert my image to a binary image like this, uh, where I had light here and dark here. Um, this is a good way of finding that threshold value. Uh, it's called the Atsu method, and it's used in MATLAB um, and other uh, standard algorithms. The idea is we take our histogram in the form of a probability distribution, and we minimize the variance between the groups. So if, if the threshold is here, uh, sigma 2 would be the variance or, or standard deviation of the pixels above that threshold, and sigma 1 would be the standard deviation below that threshold. So we want those um, variances within the groups to be as small as possible. Or equivalently, we could maximize the variance between the groups if we take the, the mean of one group minus the global mean and the mean of the second group minus the global mean. We want those to be as far apart as possible. So the Atsu method simply goes through the image, I mean, uh, tries all these possible thresholds to, to maximize or minimize these quantities. So let's take an example in uh, MATLAB. Um, in MATLAB we have the function um, gray thresh. So let me read in the image uh, 8.tiff, which is what we are looking at. So um, this is the histogram of that image, as we saw before. Um, we'll compute the histogram by using gray thresh. And as you can see, it gives me a value um, 0.6 or so. Now really, MATLAB scales that to between 0 and 1. So to find the actual uh, pixel value, gray val value here, I could multiply that by uh, 255. So that would give me a uh, pixel gray level of about 165, which would be about right here. So I can use the derived value of t to um, threshold the image, either using that other expression or im to bw. So doing this um, gives me that uh, gray level image or binary image that we saw earlier. Okay, so once we've thresholded the image, we want to find connected components or blobs. Um, so first we define uh, what we mean by connected. So for connected means that a pixel is connected to uh, one of its uh, neighbors above or below or to the side. Eight connected um, means that the connectivity is also allowed to be in the diagonal direction. 
So we say that two pixels are connected in a region S if there is a path between them consisting entirely of pixels within S. So if, if I have a region S uh, consisting of all ones and I have zeros outside and I could find um, let's say a point A and a point B and if I can go all the way from A to B while staying completely within S then um, those two pixels are connected. Um, so we say that S is a connected component if there exists a path between every pair of pixels. And labeling is the process of assigning the same label number to every pixel in a connected component. So let's say I had two blobs, S and T, um, where each blob is connected to itself, but not to the other blob. So uh, to label this, I would replace all of these ones with a label number in this case, let me just pick a 1 here, and a different label number for the pixels in T, for example, 2. So my resulting image has, uh, is, it has uh, pixels integers uh, corresponding to the label number. So a simple example, um, this binary image, if I labeled this uh, using 4 connected, um, you can see that um, oops. Racer. You can see that um, the first group here would be a region uh, by itself, not connected to any other. This would be another region, uh, assuming I use four connectivity. This would be another, and this would be a region all by itself. If I chose uh, 8 connected as my uh, convention for connectivity, then um, these regions, these pixels are all connected uh, via 8 connectivity. And these others are still um, regions by themselves. Now, it's really fast to do this uh, kind of labeling. Uh, really just takes one pass through the image to assign labels and record equivalences and a second pass to replace the temporary labels with equivalence labels. So let's see how that works. Um, we start with an image, um, a binary image of ones and zeros, and we're going to produce a label image L. So we'll scan through the binary image from uh, left to right, top to bottom, and uh, look for ones. So when we find a one, oh, I'm sorry, if, if there is no one, then we just output a zero where we have their label. But if we do have a one, then we have to consider a number of possibilities here. So the first possibility is that um, the neighbor to the left is a zero and the neighbor above is a zero. By the way, I'm assuming four connectivity in this example. If that's the case, then basically we found a new region. So we, um, we uh, create a new label number and we assign it to L at that point. Um, another possibility would be if uh, the pixel we're, we're at is a one, but the pixel above is also a one, and the one to the left is a zero. Now we've already seen these pixels above and to the left and they've already the one above has already been assigned a label so we're going to use that pixels label um, for ourselves here. The third case would be um, where the left neighbor is a one and the top neighbor is a zero which case we use the label from the left neighbor. And the final case is where uh, both the pixels above and to the left are ones. Now in this case, um, we ideally we would use the same label, th these two would be the same label because they're all connected now. But there's a chance that the labels will be different. So what we'll do is we'll arbitrarily pick uh, either label and then we'll record the equivalence of those two. And then we go through L and replace the temporary labels with equivalence labels. 
So let's do an example on this simple image. Um, we go through the image until we find a one. We, in this case, just recreate a new label number. We keep going. This is also a one because the left neighbor, uh, uh, I'm just using the, the label from the left neighbor. If we keep on going, we hit another one and there's nothing around it, so we start a new label called two. Uh, on the next row, we, we scan from left to right and we continue with the labels that we found. Same thing here. And here is the case where we have different labels above and to the left, so we'll arbitrarily pick the one above. And we will record the equivalence class um, that one and two um, are, let's say, I'll call it class one. Um, we just continue on um, with the labeling um, until we're done with the first pass. Then the second pass, we go through the image and we replace all the temporary labels with the class number that we see here. So one is replaced with one, two is replaced with one, etc. So we get basically we have a single region uh, of ones like this.